Now, the rest of the story. All right, welcome back to the shop bench where our motto is, if it ain't broke, you're not trying. I have been working on getting this back together and if I can get you over to the light. Um, so far it's going back together pretty good. Uh, the biggest things that gave me the most problems were literally these springs. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and call them man killers. But um, they're in, everything is greased up. I made sure this grease zerk works before I went through and put this last bearing in. Um, there is a spacer in here, which I reused. So I reused that spacer and I replaced the spring that goes on around it. It was pretty important to make sure that this spring, which the old one is in pretty good condition yet, uh, this spring, its real purpose, only purpose that it had really had shown to uh, serve is to make sure that it is moving grease from this zerg here and it is pushing it up. If I can flip this over without dropping it on my foot. Haven't done it yet, but the day isn't over. Um, yeah, I know, workspace is dirty. There, that'll work. Um, this up through here, um, it makes sure that that spring is pushing grease up into this top bearing. I did make sure they are pre-greased bearings, but they're opened to a certain degree that they're able to um, get grease later on. So uh, this part is going together fairly smoothly. Um, I got to go through, which I don't know if I'm going to bother doing it yet tonight, but um, basically just check, checking and recheck and making sure that's going back together right. Because I don't know about you guys, but this is one of those jobs where I simply do not uh, want to go back and redo ever again. <laughs> at, l at least not in the short term. And at least for the life of this combine. I mean, it's got, what, 2200 separator hours on it? 2200 separator hours on it. So, I mean, I don't think we're going to have this combine for another 2200 or 2000 hours on it. Uh, this is the shaft that is going down in here which not that shaft specifically um this one that's sitting in there and that's exactly where it's going to sit um bearings the burr the nut depends on where you're at and what kind of term you want to use i mean people will get really mixed up when you call these different things i call them nuts burrs um that bleeping thing um these are the big things i'm gonna have to make sure that i did not lose um kind of a catastrophe around here the last couple days you guys saw my last video we were working on the combine uh, the combine is getting washed off it has literally been raining all day and i think according to the report that came out the other day that the crop is pretty well made and I'll be a bear. I'll give you guys your guys a little bit of a bearish report. But our crops currently are the best they've been in the last three or four years. So I guess everybody was optimistic that we were going to have higher prices, but especially going into these reports anymore, um, I don't hold my breath. I've had enough experience in uh, the first how many years I've been doing this. Uh, where you are 100% in charge and responsible of your marketing. And when corn hits $4, and I think it was 73 cents on the contracts, the futures that I was watching, um, you're a fool not to sell if you are able to sell or market your grain. Um, I know, granted, not everybody can do that. Uh, not everybody is comfortable doing that. Um, but I'm talking for myself. I'm not talking for um, any of my other uh, farm viewers. Um, but I just, uh, as far as this last report where we were down so much, um, I really didn't give them the chance to really wreck me. 
I already made sure that we were sold really comfortably going into their support. So bullish, bullish or bearish, uh, that report really didn't matter to me a whole lot either way. I mean, I do have a little bit of corn. Uh, I could could have sold on a on a bullish side of the report, but I'm also it's not going to make or break me. So, all right. Um, so I'm not going to be doing a progressional video like I did the other day of me tearing this apart. Um, mainly just because the other day I took this apart in about an hour, give or take. And it is going to take me, it has been taking me longer uh, just to put it back together. I mean, these guys alone, uh, they, they took a lot of time. But um, just making sure that I was getting everything greased up and put back in properly where I wasn't destroying stuff. The wood block came in really handy. I know some of my seasoned viewers, my uh, mechanic viewers, absolutely hate my hammer bar, which is hammer slash pry bar. I mean, I was always told in college because believe it or not, I went to school for, I went to co uh, college at Calmar, Iowa. Calmar, Calmir, depends on who you were and where you're from. We always said Calmar, I guess because we're the Wisconsin boys, as everybody referred to us. Um, but they actually told us that, our instructors did, that you were supposed to get rid of any claw hammers or anything you had in your toolbox. Well, in my professional toolbox, my tools and everything that I brought home from college, because I actually bought all snap-on tools and they're all locked up away where only I can use them for the most part. Um, they told us to get rid of the, the claw hammers because when you're working at a John Deere dealership, working on a $300,000, $600,000 piece of machinery and it's brand new just from the factory and the farmer or the owner that just bought that said piece of equipment shows up and it happens to be at the shop and you're walking around the shop carrying a claw hammer. Um, they tend to frown on that, but you guys can tell we are not a John Deere mechanic shop. We're a farmer shop. And I do have ball peen hammers and all that fun stuff at home. I do use on occasion, but I think this, we're gonna put this down as, you know, a multi-purpose tool. I mean, it works. I mean, I don't need a big hammer to take these bearings out when I was because they actually came out fairly easy. Um, my uncle was just here. You guys have seen him uh, from time to time. And <laughs> he was uh, he was here when I was putting those snap rings in, let's just say. And he watched my video, me tearing it out uh, the other day. And he asked, well, that's what you were working on the other day, right? It's like, yeah. And my statement to that was, is I can do the destruction part, the tearing apart, pretty easily it's pretty straightforward i mean you're not generally as long as you know what to not outright destroy um you're okay uh, but when you're putting it back together the goal is to get it put back in better condition than what it was when you were tearing it out and like the shaft here and i did hit that with a hammer a couple times and oh what else did i do um you guys saw me take out these guys, I was kind of rough on them, and I still got to take a bearing out here. Better not lose my shims, those are pretty important. Um, but this piece right here, um, this is cast, and there's a bearing right there, which, uh huh. Oh, I got to clean this up yet. I guess I wasn't 100% done getting this ready to be put back together, but I was close enough. Um, I know you guys are probably getting motion sickness, but. I've also had way too much Mountain Dew in the last like two hours. And uh, this looks like that shouldn't be too bad to bust out of there. I'll just put it down into the vise, the shims obviously out of the way so I don't bust those all pieces. And I'll get this knocked out. I have the new bearings are sitting right there yet. And it should go together. I don't want to jinx myself. So I'm just going to say this is going to go together just absolutely terribly like. And I'm going to fight it for probably a good day and a half and possibly possibly use my unregulated claw hammer and maybe bust my finger two or three times so that's the optimistic in me or person in me right 
So, oh, those two shims there, I need two. The only thing that's concerning me is I got that guy, and oh gosh. Somebody really should come and clean this bench up. But then I wouldn't want, know what to do if we actually had a clean bench. So I like to keep it dirty. Um, key right there. So we're good on the keys for the time being until I need them and that thing's gonna disappear. So that is the shop law. Um, I might know exactly where everything is at. I might be the only one here from the time I tore it apart to the time I put it back together and I will still lose it. I'm pretty sure it's the dragon. Um, for those of you that are new to the channel and aren't used to hearing the, it was a dragon term, that was also another, another saying that was said at college. Uh, my instructor asked one of my classmates what happened or how something got broke or something else like that and like a somewhat serious topic you know I can't remember exactly what it was but uh, my classmate completely straight faced very serious turned to my instructor and said it was a dragon a dragon swooped in here right right in front of us and took off with I think something I think it was one of the special tools disappeared he was wondering where it went because they were the last ones to use it so uh, we tend to say it was a dragon it was a gremlin you don't hear gremlin too much around here but most definitely when important parts it's always the important stuff that you really do not want to risk losing or even the simple stuff that you really don't think is that big of a deal that you end up losing you have to go back all the way to Sloan's and uh, get a 25 cent part just get a thousand dollar job done this would be a thousand dollar job if I would have just dropped it off up the dealership and had them do it. It was $671, uh, it's not on that piece of paper. $671 for parts, which is what I currently had. Uh, that's all that was in this box was just under $700 worth of stuff. And you know what? A third of that was paper um, for filling and um, just about $500 in labor. So um, yeah. Alrighty then, hopefully it quits raining. Uh, the crops do look amazing. I know I'm rambling, just work, work with me here. Um, the driveways, believe it or not, it is coming down slowly enough. It did rain hard enough, but not so much that it actually moved dirt, moved gravel, and it didn't create any ditches. These are the kind of rains that we've been looking for all year long basically for the last two years uh, the soybeans down there look absolutely beautiful the combine this is the third bath she's gotten sitting outside and you know what looks are deceiving because the rain the water makes it look nice and clean and pretty it dries up and all the dirt and grime and dust is still going to be there so it's going to need a pressure wash it's going to need actually the air hose again uh, to get some nooks and crannies cleaned up again and then pressure washed off and the unloading auger's got to come out. That's going to be a video in itself, and none of us are looking forward to it. So, I'm starting to get uh, winded here, and I'm really surprised my phone hasn't been ringing. So, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Take care, take it easy, keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys. If it's not tomorrow, it'll be next time. So, until then.